The River Thames is the longest river in England, and it has an equally long and storied history. There's more lore behind this river than any other in the United Kingdom, and most of that lore is not exactly pleasant. In this video, we'll be taking a look at the rather grim history of a river that is unlike any other. Capital punishment was a common, everyday thing in London before the second half of the 20th century. Executions were mostly reserved for crimes relating to murder and treason, and hanging was the most common method used to carry them out. Executions for piracy and other seafaring crimes had a special gallows reserved for them at the River Thames. The unlucky prisoners who were found guilty of piracy charges were sentenced to death and walked from Marshalsea Prison across the London Bridge and on towards Wapping, where a place known as Execution Dock was located on the river. This bloody dock was just offshore, below the tide line, because that's where maritime jurisdiction technically began. On the way to the gallows, doomed pirates would be allowed one last quart of ale before they would be strung up. It doesn't get much more piratey than that. These dockside executions were more painful and took longer than usual. This was because they would use short ropes to make sure the prisoner's neck wouldn't break, and they would slowly die from asphyxiation instead. It's almost like they were trying to make it the most haunted river in England. After they died, they would be cut down, and their bodies would be chained to the bank of the Thames until they had been submerged by three tides of the river. Not all deaths at the Thames were executions. Perhaps the most highly publicized case of someone ending up dead in the river was 17-year-old Claire Woolerton, who died in 1981. On August 27th, she met her boyfriend at an Ealing amusement park. They had an argument, and she left, walking home alone. She was never seen alive again. Claire's mutilated body was found by the river the next day. The ensuing police investigation went nowhere until the case was reopened 30 years later in 2011. Forensic DNA evidence was discovered with new technology and it led to the arrest of Colin Campbell. He was 66 years old and already serving a manslaughter sentence for the death of a different woman who died the same year Claire did. Involvement and definitive proof of his guilt was never found. However, most are certain that he was in fact the killer. The fact that the case was never officially closed haunts the family and the river to this day. But the murder of Claire Woolerton isn't the most grisly and dark murder in the history of the River Thames. That unfortunate distinction belongs to a series of unsolved murders that took place between the years 1887 and 1889. Jack the Ripper was active during that time, but these murders are believed to be the work of a different serial killer. Like Jack the Ripper, he was never caught. Jack the Ripper has supposedly made some posthumous visits to the river in ghostly form. These cases go by a few names, but are most commonly called the Raynham Mystery or the Whitehall Mystery. The body parts of four female victims were discovered scattered along the river, but only one of the victims was ever actually identified. It began when some workers came across a torso. Just a torso. The head and limbs had been cut off. Other parts of another woman were found later that week. Two years later, another torso was discovered, leading the police to think that the cases were connected and the work of one man. They probably hoped it was one man anyway. It would be even worse if there were two killers leaving torsos in the river. They already had Jack the Ripper to deal with after all. Sadly, today, many people don't need anyone to kill them in the River Thames, because they're doing it themselves. There are between 30 to 50 suicides in the river every year. In 2019, Prince William started a program to prevent self-harm incidents along the river. Most of these deaths are people jumping off of the London Bridge. On average, a body washes up on the shore of the river once a week. Typically, the cause is suicide or accidental drowning. It doesn't usually make the news, but these are the source of most of the river's heartbreaking stories today. The most recent River Thames drowning to get national attention was the heroic but tragic death of 20-year-old Folojimi Olobunmi Adawole. He was one of two men who fearlessly jumped into the river to save a woman who had accidentally fallen in from the London Bridge. Known to his friends simply as Jimmy, he attempted to rescue the woman at around midnight. The Coast Guard and Marine Police patrols were able to retrieve the woman and another man who had also jumped in after her, but they couldn't find Jimmy. His body was discovered nearly six hours later after an exhaustive search. Sometimes, the river itself is the direct cause of the tragedy. In 1928, the river had its worst flood ever. It affected much of Riverside London, as well as many places further downstream. Fourteen people died as a result of the flooding, and thousands were made homeless. Floodwater poured over the Thames embankment, and part of the Chelsea embankment actually collapsed. This was the last major flood to affect central London, and it led to the implementation of new flood control measures. The flood was caused by heavy snow that fell near the source of the river during Christmas that year. A sudden thaw happened over New Year's Eve, and then there was unusually heavy rain. This perfect storm of events led to a doubling of the volume of water that came down the river. This sudden and extreme water level rise happened to coincide with a high spring tide and a storm surge caused by an extra-tropical cyclone in the North Sea. Storms are not the only things that have made their way into the Thames from the sea. 
In May last year, Londoners were shocked to discover a whale in the river. It was a mink whale calf and had found itself trapped in the river for several days. Officials and scientists determined that it would be impossible to transport the whale back to the ocean somehow, and so it was euthanized to prevent further suffering. It's a mystery how and why the whale strayed so far away from its natural habitat, but it's not the first time this has happened in the river. In 2019, a humpback whale was killed when it collided with a boat. In 2006, a bottlenose whale was found in the Thames and also ended up being euthanized. Whales become weakened and starve when they end up in the wrong environment, and the River Thames is definitely the wrong environment. Sometimes, the Thames is also a very unsafe place for ships. In 1878, the Princess Alice sunk with over 700 passengers on board. It was returning from a day trip to Kent when it was sliced in two after being hit by an 890-ton ship. Eyewitnesses said that the collision also caused tons of sewage to leak into the water, causing an unbearable stench that lingered for long after the accident. Crew members tried to throw out life buoys and even just planks of wood for people to float on, but it did little to help with such a large-scale crash. It's thought that the heavy layered clothing that was popular during the Victorian era probably weighed passengers down and contributed to their drowning. Survivors from the sinking said they had to push drowning people off of themselves in order to survive in the water. Somewhere between 600 and 700 people died. Decaying bodies washed up on shore for weeks after the event. Only about 100 people on board survived the disaster. Ship accidents are unfortunately not just a thing of the past that would happen before modern technology. In 1989, a pleasure boat called the Martianus crashed into an 18-meter-long dredger. The ship was overturned and sank within just a minute of the initial impact. 51 people died. Some of the bodies were carried far away by the current and were discovered 8 miles away a few days after the crash. At the time, it was decided that having the victims' families identify the dead would be too traumatic for them to handle. Instead, the coroner cut off the hands of 25 victims for identification purposes. This information didn't come out for three years, since the families hadn't given permission for them to do this. With so many deaths on the River Thames, it's only natural that there would be all kinds of ghost stories connected to it. It's said to be one of the most haunted places in London. Many people have reported seeing a ghost ship on the river, east of Westminster Bridge and Big Ben. It's supposedly crewed by three mysterious men who can be seen on misty days. The ship enters beneath the bridge, but never emerges on the other side. Another famous Thames ghost story is told by people who believe they saw a figure jump from the bridge on New Year's Eve. Locals say that it was the ghost of Jack the Ripper. Even if it's just shadows playing tricks on Londoners, there's no denying that the River Thames is one of the most eerie places in the city. For more videos on the most amazing forgotten parts of our history, be sure to subscribe to the Intrigued Mind channel, like the video, and leave your suggestions in the comments below.